Hello, hello everyone. Jelena, thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited to share with your audience how I use our incredible Helium 10 tools to optimize a Amazon product listing. So if you're ready, Jelena, I'll just jump right in right now and share my screen. Hi, Karen, thank you for taking the time to come to our channel today. And I'm looking forward to hearing uh, your site, uh, how you use it, because there, I know that there are always some variations to how everyone's yeah. using this these couple of tools yep. um, and we have certain methods that we use at our agency as well. So looking forward to hear um, from the creators how it's really done. So feel free to, to, to let us know. Yeah, that's really well said. I, I agree. Everybody has their own special sauce of doing it. So yeah, I have my own way and I'm, I'm sure there'll be some value for everybody watching. Everybody can learn something from all of our, our different ways of doing stuff. So Beautiful. I will just share my screen and get started. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go over here to Amazon and I'm just going to use this random example of a tanning mitt. This is kind of my go-to product example. Everybody has those, right? Like silicone spatulas. Bradley loves to share his CBD oil. So tanning mitt is mine. And mm -hmm. so the first thing I want to do when I'm optimizing a listing, let's say I'm, you know, getting into this product category and I really want to figure out who my top competitors are. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go into the Helium 10 Chrome extension and I'm going to click X-ray and I'm going to sort based on sales volume and then I'm going to see Okay, <clears throat> so it looks like the top tanning mitt is this Gaia self tanning mitt applicator. Mm -hmm. They're doing about 79,000 revenue. So I'm going to copy this ASIN and then I'm going to put it into Cerebro. So I'm going to launch the Helium 10 tools and I'm going to open Cerebro and then I'm going to put it in here. And then I'll just get a few more just for this example. Normally I would like to get, you know, anywhere from six to nine different ASINs, but I'll just get a few more just to show an example because I want to get into the fun part of actually creating an awesome listing. So it looks like based on sales volume after mm -hmm. Gaia, the next one is this healthy genius. So I'll copy this ASIN and I'll put it into Cerebro as well. And then let's see what our next one is. Looks like St. Tropez Applicator Mitt is our next biggest sales volume. Okay. So then I'll go ahead and I will get the keywords. I'll just do a new search. They can tell I've done this example a couple of times with these tanning mitts. So I love that this tool is super fast. It's literally mining tons of information right now and pulling up mm -hmm. all of the top keywords. <clears throat> it's probably going to be thousands. You probably know this, Jelena. It's, it can get a bit crazy. <clears throat> so yeah, it looks like all three of these um, ASINs combined have about 9,000, almost 10,000 different keywords that they're indexed for. So obviously we can't put 10,000 keyword phrases into our listing, right? So we got to get a little bit more tricky here and really figure out, you know, what are the most important keywords that are going to have the most bank for a buck, right? So we want to see some advanced filters here. <clears throat> so what I like to do, if I had, let's say like nine ASINs, I would probably want to see um, maybe about you know, five or six competing products. So we'll say, since we only have three here, we'll just do at least two of these products mm -hmm. having index for similar keywords. And then let's do a minimum ranking average of one and a max competitor ranking of 30. And let's see what we come up with for our keyword list. So it looks like we still have a ton of keywords. So maybe we can even get more tricky instead of 30. Maybe we'll do just on page one, first mm -hmm. within the first 18 positions for those keywords. 
again, we still have so, so many. So let's even get crazier. And instead of just showing two, we'll show all three of these products have to be ranking on page one. Okay. So let's even get crazier. It looks like the, I mean, it makes sense. These are all doing really well. So let's say within the first nine positions, let's see what that gives us. Um, here's what I do when I use this tool. Um, sometimes I just use the match type organic that usually narrows Beautiful. down the, the selection because when we're doing the listing optimization, our main focus is to rank organically for, for our clients. So that's the kind of match type. It usually filters down, narrows down. For the best optimized ones, we can still, we can easily see what keywords are being used. Well said. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So we still have a ton. And again, we could, you know, get really crazy. We could even do, let's say the top four positions. And then we can kind of just go through one by one and kind of eliminate like this one, for example, Flashman mm -hmm. Mitt Graver, that's more brand driven. So we can just exit that Suntan Mitt. And then maybe we can just, you know, go ahead and sort this based on volume. Right. So yeah, so mm -hmm. you can see the highest search volume keyword phrase is self tanner mint. So again, we can, we can use our top keywords and go through this. And basically I like to find my top 10 to 20 keyword phrases. Um, how about you, Delina? How many do you usually use when you're doing keyword research? Um, when we're doing keyword research for product listing optimization, we usually take up to 20 keywords, not more than that, um, yeah. for, for the front end, for the back end, for the search terms and uh, subject matter keywords and all of that. We go as much as we can handle, as much as there is room for it in terms of character limitations. Yeah. So uh, we kind of make a difference between what goes on the front end and the back end when we do our keyword research for product listing optimization. Beautiful. Well said. So I agree with you. So for here, what I like to do is take it to Frankenstein and see what all of these mm -hmm. keyword phrases have in common. So I can do just one word per line. And so that kind of narrows down these 372 words down to 79 unique words. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can remove common words, remove single words, we remove single letters. So we still have about 72. So I feel good about that. And then we can go ahead and upload this into Scribbles. And then it's going to give us all these keywords that we want to put it in, like you were saying, some in our front of an mm -hmm. listing and then some in our back end. And then I'll go ahead. I didn't sort these very well. I have still a ton. So I'm going to delete a lot of these. But so let's say I'm using these. I think that's round 20. So I'll say these are my top 20 keywords that I want to rank for. And then these are all my just unique words. And I'm going to click apply. Mm -hmm. And then did you know the trick, Jelena, on the colors down here, what they mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's red, then it's being repeated more times. If it's green, then it should be okay. It's like only once mentioned or something like that. I know that there's a beautiful. Yeah, you're so smart. Yeah, so with the phrases, if it's red or orange, those have the highest search volume, and then it goes down to black, and those would be the least searched phrases. You know, the ones that maybe have 100, 200 monthly searches. And then you're up here with the words. So the red means that these individual words are showing up the most times in your phrases. So you can make sense, or we have self tanning mitt, self tanning mitt, self tan mitt. So so that gives you a good idea of how often those words show up. So those are going to be probably more important ones that you want to have because they're going to be showing up in more keyword phrases. So then what I like to do here is I've got my keywords. I'm all ready to go. So I want to put, I like to have three to five keyword, unique keyword phrases in my title. How many do you like to have, Jelena? Um, well, it, it all depends. You know, the yeah. different categories have different character limits. Mm -hmm. So if, if, uh, if we're in a category that has longer character limits, then we try to use more instead yeah. of uh, not really like keyword stuff, but 
tastefully add as much as we can. Beautiful, I if love that. Um, if it's a highly relevant and competitive and highly uh, keyword with a high search volume, then usually we use it in the title for sure. Yeah, well said. Okay, so I'm trying to see if we can get multiple Sometimes you can kind of do it where you can get multiple keyword phrases using mm -hmm. the long tilde, but sometimes I don't do as well on the fly, <laughs> but let's say if we could, um, self tanny mitt, self tan applicator mitt, because you want to make sure they're like still exact, the order is exact, even if you're trying to fit multiple in. Mm -hmm. So. So tanner mint, tanning mint. Hmm. So at least I got two. Um, let's say for sunless tan. So that would be my canonical URL. And you like to try and get five words and then a dash and then I like to just, again, find a few more of my really good ones that I want to put in. So maybe it's, um, <clears throat> let's see. Another, another important thing is if this isn't our brand, like St. Tropez, mm -hmm. we wouldn't want to put that inside our listing. The only time I would suggest using that is if you're specifically doing like a PPC campaign, but I wouldn't put that in your back-end search terms, I wouldn't put in your title, I wouldn't put in your bullet points, just because I know Amazon is cracking down more on that. So definitely be careful of that. So, um, so yeah, you definitely sometimes you have to get creative and let's go see what they have right now in their listing. So you go back here to Amazon and you click on their listing and let's see what they're already doing well in. So what's really cool is your Helium 10 tools will show up right here. It will show you this really cool data to show what's been happening in the last 30 days with their sales rank and their, um, their mm -hmm. pricing. So it's super valuable to see. I use that every day. Oh, that's awesome. You're pro. Anyway, so then you can go here and you can click on the listing optimization listing optimizer and it will automatically populate scribbles with their listing. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of see what they're doing, where they use it. So you can see they're using it a lot yeah. in their title. Now I personally wouldn't recommend doing that so many times. It's definitely like more keyword stuffing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, from my experience, I can tell right away it's a Chinese seller. They're mm. probably using dumping pricing, which is why they rank so well. They they have mm. so many orders, probably because their pricing is, is a lot lower than the competitors. And uh, with okay. all of these, all, all this title just looks like a Chinese seller, basically. Yeah, well said. Yeah, that's really well said. So they did a good job with, you know, this canonical URL, but everything else, you're right. It's a lot of... Tanny mitt, tanny mitt, tanny mitt, tanny mitt. That's definitely not something I would suggest doing. So then we can also go in and kind of see they have, you know, over 4,000 reviews. So I think it's super valuable to use the review insights tool and just really quickly get an idea of, you know, what are people saying about this product? How are they using it? What are they using it for? This is kind of what I like to do to get inside the mind of my customers mm -hmm. and really figure out what are they saying often? And so this analysis tool is super helpful. So you can see people have said self tanner within the reviews 153 times. So that's the most common phrase that people are using in reviews. But you can see very soft shows up a lot, easy to use, self tanning, mm -hmm. super soft, better than tanning lotion. So as I'm going through and looking at this and researching, I would be making a note and thinking, okay, obviously these are not keywords, right? That people are searching but these are phrases that mm -hmm. buyers are looking for. As far as, that's, this is more what they're thinking, right? Not what they're searching, more what they're thinking. So this is super valuable to think about 
as you're writing your bullet points, right? So we could see, let's see what they have in their bullet points right now. <clears throat> so, you know, they have some, they've touched on some of these things. But yeah, I would try to be as, you know, cohesive as possible when I'm writing a listing. So, you know, we saw they like it very soft. So we could say number one, mm -hmm. super soft. And this is a cool trick as well, which I like. I know it's like not that big of a deal, but I like to just be able to like quickly capitalize something just by clicking right. that. That's a cool little trick, right? Absolutely. Super soft tanning mitt. And then maybe we looked and saw some other important phrases. Um, easy to clean. That would be a big one, right? As a buyer. Yeah. Expressing the benefits of the product, basically. Beautiful. Beautiful. Easy to clean with just water. And then, yeah, perfect. Um, maybe say get a natural streak free tan like you mentioned um, we can go deeper and say now you don't have to spend hours um, harming your skin in the sun mm -hmm. just grab our mitt our sunless and here's a keyword phrase that just naturally fit there, tiny mitt, and your favorite. Um, tanning lotion, favorite, let's just say favorite. Sunless, tanning lotion, oil or cream, and voila. So we can get tricky, but I love to use the review insights and really get an idea of these popular phrases that people are saying, because I know it's going to be relevant, right? Yeah. Beautiful. So with, is there anything else you would like to add, Jelena, as far as how you do listing optimization or anything? Mm -hmm. A cool little yeah, trick? Well, our copywriters, when they, when they do copywriting, usually use the review insights tool to read, you know, some of the most important, of course, words to use the same way that you did it right now. Mm -hmm. And um, we also try to learn what are some of the most common objections as well from the reviews. Beautiful. It takes a little bit of time, but it's very useful, you know, handling objections in the copywriting. If someone stayed on the listing, uh, in spite of all the competition bidding on it and showing up on the page. Um, if you go to the product detail page of this product on Amazon, mm -hmm. you will see that there is uh, other competitors bidding on it. Um, like here below, down below, you can see that there are already two ads on the listing and then mm -hmm. some more obviously down there in the automated sponsor products and all this. So it's, if a customer still stays on the listing in spite of all of that, um, we just try to make sure that we handle some of the most common objections because that's like the second phase of optimizing the, it's, it's the conversion rate optimization side that we use it for and um, try, to, try to make it as easy for them as possible to decide to make a purchase. In okay. some cases, you know, in some cases, it's always going to be about the price. So there isn't much you can do on that side unless decrease the price and all that. But when it comes to some products that have uh, some functionalities that are added or some kind of different design or something different to them, some element of differentiation to them, mm -hmm. usually it's worthwhile to spend time write, to write high quality copy. And this is a very useful tool for us in, in our experience, simply because it allows you to understand quickly if you're being, if you're overusing some keywords, if you're, mm -hmm if you're using, if you're duplicating them, which isn't necessary in this case, it's only necessary to mention them once, either on the back end or the front end for Amazon to index it properly. So this Beautiful. kind of tool, I don't think it exists anywhere else. We, we use it for these purposes to make sure that we write high quality listing, learning from the competition. It just makes the whole process very, really seamless. So 
I would, I would definitely recommend it. That's so well said. I love your clarity, Jelena. Yeah, I agree. I love what you said too. I think that's really important. People ask a lot, like how many times do I need to put this keyword phrase in? Right. And I, you nailed it right on the head. You want to have your most important keyword matches your keyword phrases at least one time. And once is probably plenty. So you can put mm -hmm. it up here in your title. You can put it in your subject matter. So maybe there's certain, so you can see like self tan shows up a lot. So here we can do a little bit more keyword stuffing and it's not going to freak out our customers because they're not going to see this part. So we have up to 50 bytes or characters that we can use in each subject matter. So I definitely try to use all of that space. Um, self tanner DIY. And then let's see. Tan mitt. So then what's really cool too, is you can also, you can see like I've used this phrase twice. I've used this one once, I've used this one once. So we don't need to use it more than once. So I can just go ahead and hide use phrases. Mm -hmm. And then it shows me, okay, awesome. I still have 22 phrases left that I can use and put in my subject matter. And then there's all these words still that I haven't used. And so that's where I like to do the back end because you don't need to have your keyword phrases in exact phrase match form. So you can just put yeah. literally just one by one applicator, glove, mm -hmm. exfoliator, mitts, gloves, legs, application, and then we'll just start crossing them off and get rid of them. And you can, it just feels good. It feels like you're doing your, you're checking off your to-do list for the day, right? You're like, yeah, I'm getting stuff done. So yeah, yeah there's a lot of cool tips and tricks. But yeah, definitely your title is your most important place to put your exact keyword phrase matches. And then your backend search terms have a lot of power for ranking and indexing your keywords and then your subject matter. Yeah, and then I just, definitely do. yes. And then, yeah, I just like to use the bullet points where it makes sense. And it just is natural to say, I'm calling this tanning mitt or a sunless tanning mitt, but I'm not going crazy. I'm not every other word putting something because it's not as readable, right? Like we want people to be able to read this easily and they're excited to read it. And then, oh yeah, one more cool thing I want to mention real quick, Jelena, mm -hmm. is when it's not too cheesy, I do like to put emojis. And you can, they're fun, right? It makes, it makes the bullet points that much more like exciting to read and like jump off the page, adds a little color, adds a, a cool little formatting trick. So yeah, I think it's fun and you can kind of, you can do the same for each one or you can get crazy and do something different on each one. Yeah. It adds a little bit more variety and creativity. So I love this little feature in scribbles. I think it's so, so fun. It is. It is. And what we've found it usually works best with women. If the product is aimed towards women, then emojis are something that they notice better than men in our experience. That's beautiful. Yeah, so thank you so much, Selena. It's been so fun talking with you today. I loved hearing your style and your tips too, because this is so fun. Like I'm always learning from pros like you as well. So thank you so much for having me in your channel today. Of course, um, thank you for taking the time to show us this, um, all these tools and um, show us these little features. I'm sure that a lot of sellers have found it useful and, and speed up the process for their product launches as well, especially if you have a lot of product launches going on. Yes, It's something that uh, can be confusing. A lot of them hire you know, um, someone to do it and then it takes time and all of that. And sometimes you can just do it yourself and do yep. it with high quality and helium 10 is there to ensure that it's a it's a tool i 100 percent believe in and endorse oh thank you so much i really appreciate you and i totally agree this has been a game changer for me and i know thousands of other amazon sellers you know we used to take hours to manually go and read all of the different reviews and make a spreadsheet and you know put similar phrases like literally that took us what two minutes to look that up and then you know get these lists of all the top keywords that are top competitors are using like this is totally a game changer so i highly recommend helium 10. yeah it is um just make sure that you learn from the right competition like yes. if there's a listing <clears throat> that you pull out of x-ray uh, for a specific reason has 
a certain amount of uh, sales volume. Mm -hmm. Just have to know what the reason is, whether that okay. is the listing optimization side or the price or the number of reviews, what's the strong side of this specific listing that you're pulling the words from, because not always is going to be the listing optimization, uh, the reason why they're on the top of the search results. So well said. that's just like a, another pro tip. I love these pro tips, Lena. That's such a good point. It's all about relevance and you're right, not yeah. just getting crazy with the highest search volume, like what is the mm -hmm. most similar to the product you're going to be launching and the most doable, right? Not the most competitive, right? We don't want to be competing with tons of competitors with crazy high search volume that maybe have super high cost per click, right? We want to try and just build our way up and like, you know, rank gradually for easier to rank keywords instead of like going hard and potentially failing fast, right? So that's a good point you brought up. Yeah, well, usually the most competitive keywords are the ones that offer the most opportunity at the right. same way. You just have to be ready to lose a little money before yeah. you start making it again. So it's, it's a different game, but um, su equally successful in our experience. Beautiful. I love that. So you must have a little bit more risk tolerance <laughs> to go after it a little bit harder from the beginning. Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I love that. I love that courage to go after it. Well, thank you so much, Lynn. I appreciate it. And yeah, definitely if your audience would love to, you know, try Helium mm -hmm. 10 for a month, we have a really incredible policy where you can, you know, use your VIP affiliate code and they can try it out for a month and just pay 50%. And then if they don't like it or they don't use it, then they can go ahead and get a full refund. So it's totally risk-free. Or mm -hmm. you can get 10% off using your coupon code that you'll post below. Yep. And that's 10% off for life. So, you know, whatever plan you decide to get that fits within your budget and your business needs, it literally is such incredible value that I highly recommend it for every single Amazon seller out there. It's a game changer. It is. You can't work without it, at least right. in our experience. It's, yeah. uh, you're, you're blind without it. That's yes, perfect. you really are. You really are like driving down the freeway with your lights off in the dark you're like oh man i don't know what i'm competing against here so yeah it's a definitely years ago oh, oh, go sorry. Ahead. Sorry. no you sorry please interrupt well a couple of years ago you could have gone without it because everyone else was doing it like 2016 and mm -hmm. um it was chaotic and all of that but now um selling on amazon requires a lot more yes. data proficiency and yeah. uh, tools like helium 10 are definitely there to help out with that part that's so well said. You're so intelligent, Lena. I agree. Yeah, when I started, that's exactly how it was, where it's just, you didn't have to do as much. You didn't have to know the numbers and analyze the competition. And you can, you know, do a lot less to rank and win. Now you've got to be, you got to be smart. You got to have the right tools and the information to make educated decisions. So Helium 10 is a must have for sure. Um, yeah, we'll share in the video description some of the links that people can use to try out the tool either at 50% off or 10% off lifetime. So uh, look out for the video description. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Lena. And thank you everyone for watching. It's been so fun talking with you today, Jelena. You too. Thank you guys. Thanks. Bye.